John Carpenter's Vampires But Make It Hip Hop. Day Shift is a Netflix original from director J.J. Perry. This is his directorial debut, but he has stayed busy in Hollywood doing a lot of stunt work. A lot of fucking stunt work. Seriously, if you check out his IMDb page, you may ask the same question I did. How has this motherfucker had any goddamn time to sleep over the last number of years? But good on him for staying busy. In all seriousness, this was also written by two different people. Tyler Tice, his first credit, and also Shay Hatton, whose credits include John Wick 3 and Army of the Dead. Army of the Dead was one of the worst goddamn abominations put on film in the last 10 fucking years. I fucking hated that movie so goddamn much. So whenever I see Army of the Dead in associated with any other movie, whether it's writing, cinematography, anything, whatever, I instantly am filled with despair because Army of the Dead was so fucking bad. But you know what? Some people write some bad stuff. Some people just write some stuff for a paycheck. So that's not the worst thing in the world. There are worse films that have been released on streaming and in theaters. So, okay, one... Credit, one bad credit does not a bad movie make, if that's even uh, grammatically correct. So maybe the cast will save it. Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx is fucking terrific. He was great in Any Given Sunday. He's great in other stuff before that, obviously, and ever since. He has done some great goddamn films. He's a terrific fucking actor with a lot of goddamn range. I haven't loved every single movie he's been in. Collateral, I thought, was a very big breakout role for him. <clears throat> so, okay, Jamie Foxx. He has good comedic timing. He's a very good actor. He's shown he can do drama. Again, he has range. So, all right. Dave Franco's also in this. Well, it's not James, so at least there's that. Natasha Louis Bordezzo, who I'm just going to say right now is fucking gorgeous. I need to see her in more movies. Megan Good. She's also good as well. Fitting, because that's her last name. <clears throat> Carla Souza. And also Snoop Dogg's in this. DL do double puff puff pass in the gas. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I'm not even sure I got those lyrics correct, but yeah, Snoop Dogg. Okay, he's always good for a laugh, and also for clouds of fucking weed being able to be seen from space. But whatever, Snoop Dogg is definitely a character. He fits in in Hollywood and in hip hop, and even fits in in wrestling. It's, it's fitting that he's had <clears throat> you know appearances in all three forms of media. But nevertheless. This is about a hard-working pool cleaner, Bud, played by Jamie Foxx, who actually is a vampire hunter. And he's vampire hunting because pool cleaning doesn't pay the bills all that good. So him and his wife, uh, played by Megan Good, Joss, aka short for Jocelyn, they are separated. And they have a daughter, Paige. And, well, basically what it's coming down to is they're separated. He's trying to do right by his daughter. Possibly, you know, get back together with his wife and just make things work. And he's hunting vampires and killing them, <clears throat> but one operation, one, you know, um, situation basically leads him down a dark path, ironic, considering the vampires can only really live in the dark, they can try to live in the sunlight, all of our strengths, none of our weaknesses, wait, no, that was a better movie, that was Blade, <clears throat> but this leads him to basically being caught in a web by a particular vampire that is bound, determined to not only get revenge, but take over San Fernando Valley, California. So, how was this movie as far as, like, you know, playing on the tropes and everything and having fun and being a witty comedy that also had a bunch of action and a bunch of stunts? And was it a bright, breezy action adventure? It had some good stunts. I won't knock the stunts, but I will say that just about everything in this goddamn movie was cliche, ridiculous. The comedy totally fucking misses. There was not one funny joke in this goddamn thing. And again, there's a really good cast here. <clears throat> a really fucking good cast. And some good ideas. And they're all reduced to basically just being put in a blender and spun around to a beautiful oblivion. Rendezvous, and I was through with this movie after 30 fucking minutes. I watched the whole goddamn thing, but I could tell 30 minutes in this wasn't going to be good. And nothing changed as it went on. This really was John Carpenter's Vampires, which isn't even the most wholly original vampire movie. But it had some wit. It had some good vamp action. Sure, it had James Woods. D D who's a piece of fucking shit, but at least at that point, James Woods sort of meant something, and John Carpenter's name carries something. J.J. Perry being a first-time director here, you can tell that he wants <coughs> to treat the action as the main selling point, while also having some good comedy, but also some good drama. Oh, it's a family dynamic. It's all these genres melded together, and it's a fucking pot of bullshit. This is fucking abysmal. Jamie Foxx is totally, like, just sleepwalking through the whole goddamn thing. Dave Franco is reduced to being a blubbering mess, which, I mean, he was sort of funny at first. But to me, it reminds me of James Woods and the Priest, you know, the characters from uh, John Carpenter's Vampire Hunters. Except that was done better. That was better comedy. This had nothing. Not one laugh. 
not one witty line. Oh, and they threw out some hip-hop songs. Great, that's totally fucking original. And look, <clears throat> hip-hop's really good. Especially like prime hip-hop. Maybe current hip-hop, not so much. But they had Snoop, they had Ice Cube playing. They had a remix of California Love, which makes sense. Because you gotta be on the goddamn nose since, you know, you're in California. So why not just go straight for the goddamn nostalgia? <laughs> but from the very opening, like, you know, the opening vampire attack... And then all this stuff, we're going to all this bendy stuff, and they're doing all this and doing the parkour and all that stuff. And they're just bouncing around and bending around and doing yoga and all that stuff. And then they try to come up with weird things as to how, like, vampires are killed. Wood to the heart and silver to the neck and head. <clears throat> and, oh, no, they're like, you know, sometimes it'll kill them, sometimes it won't, because who gives a shit? We're just going to keep doing this weird stuff. Oh, there's this secret agency that Jamie Foxx's character used to work for, that Snoop also works for, that somehow Snoop is the voice of reason in this whole thing. Snoop's also in the movie for maybe 15 fucking minutes at the most. I think like three scenes, including one long sequence near the end. And uh, just goddamn, and the villain's, you know, motive for what they're trying to do. I mean, yeah, they're simple and that's not the worst thing in the world, but also this movie just picks things up it's going to prop up the storyline and it drops it. Up, oh, I dropped it. And then it's going to pick up the storyline. Up, oh, I dropped it. It also hints at a bunch of stuff that maybe this movie was intended to be part of an upcoming franchise. Maybe we're going to get Day Shift 2 electric, you know, L.A. Boogaloo. I don't know what the fuck we would get out of that because they kind of wrapped up a whole bunch of stuff here. Except for one little tease I'll talk about in the, you know, right near the end. But it feels like something where... Okay, we just have to assume these characters know each other, which that's fine. You can have an action comedy with some, you know, vamps getting killed and sliced and diced and all that. And you can have some fun and you can, you know, try to just have the characters be uh, surface deep. And that's really all this movie has. All this movie has is its action. When it tries to focus on the characters, you just honestly groan. At least I did. The kid was particularly annoying. I mean, the kid really wasn't given much more to do than just, well, be a kid in the goddamn movie. They would do tonal shifts for no goddamn reason. Oh, let's just do that. And then let's go over here. Oh, let's have this character do this. Oh, let's throw this subplot in. Oh, let's do this. And then, oh, I dropped it. And then let's just go on to the next thing. Let's introduce a bunch of ideas, especially near the end, because maybe we can turn this into a franchise. But then let's not explore any of this stuff, because, nope, we need to go with more vampire action, which... Look, again, I'm comparing it to John Carpenter's Vampires, which wasn't even a great movie in retrospect, but at least had a fun, whimsical energy to it. Blade had a fun, whimsical energy to it. This also had a bit of an element of training day in the sense that Jamie Foxx was pretty much above everybody else as far as character. And just, God damn it! I mean, they, they, everything about this just felt forced. The comedy felt forced, the action just blended together, even in the first opening, you know, the first action sequence, I'm like, oh boy, that's him, oh, oh, okay, we're just doing that, and oh, let's just prolong this, and let's prolong this scene, and let's do a prolonged car chase with tunnel action straight out of Terminator 2, and then let's have more characters do stupid shit, let's have characters go over here, but then they're back, and then this character, something happens to them, and then they're back, and it just... It just feels like uh, half this, like some of this movie was added with garden shears. Maybe they intended to have 30 more minutes, but God forbid if they had added any more time to this, I might have freaking screamed. It wasn't very good. It wasn't very good at all. It is on Netflix if you want to check it out, but it's really one of, if not the worst thing I've seen this year. I'm still throwing that up in the air because you know, it, there's still three months left in the goddamn year. <laughs> and there's been a lot of good shit, a lot of bad shit. And while I recognize this movie is not meant to be taken seriously, the fact that it tries to be taken seriously and tries to be dramatic amongst the dark comedy, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. It just ends up being a goddamn slop fest. So I am going to get into spoilers here, but yes, it is on Netflix. Check it out if you are one of the many that didn't cancel their subscription yet. Not that I blame people because Netflix has kind of gotten their library. But anyway, three, two, one, and spoilers. Okay, so Jamie Foxx sells um vampire teeth and other stuff on uh, to a pawn shop owner named troy and basically he would sell it at this union they used to work for but he violated a whole bunch of their codes that's a running thing a little bit later he doesn't get the money that he wants so he decides to talk to his uh friend you know played by snoop dog to get him back in the union and he does there's a dry cleaning 
uh, store that's a front for the whole thing. <laughs> and they have an operation all over, so we're probably going to get day shift Paris, day shift London, and it's probably all going to be goddamn ass, especially if anybody involved in writing and uh, directing this has anything to do with it, because good fucking God, this was bullshit. Again, the stunts are nice, but, like, cool, people can do the flip de doo -dah and do the parkour and do the gun stuff and do the <laughs> all that, and that, yeah, it's great. What else you got? Oh, you got nothing? Oh, okay, cool. We're just going to have empty, hollow action. And that's all it was. <clears throat> so, basically, Jamie Foxx and his wife are separated. Maybe in real life, I don't know. I don't really fucking care, but I mean in the movie. <clears throat> and... The old woman and a guy that he kill that he kills in the beginning turned out to actually be the daughter of uh, Carlo Carla Souza's character Audrey, who's a real estate agent is trying to take over the whole goddamn San Fernando Valley and create a hive where she can create new vampires with blackjack and hookers, and they can walk out in the light. They have this operation where they're creating the sunscreen because they listen to that Baz Luhrmann song one too many goddamn times. If anybody remembers that song, I will be amazed. But create the sunscreen where they, you know, they can walk out into the sunlight. They can't be blinded by the light. They won't melt like a douche, like a thunder. I don't even know what the lyrics are for that. But being we're over there, Snoop Dogg gets uh, him back in the union, but the boss has him on probation. <laughs> Dave Franco's character, Seth, comes up, a nerdy guy that goes out in the field with him. There's a bowling alley scene at one point where people get shot and destroyed because the vamp there are different classes of vampires. There's these there's these ones that are like the lowly ones or like, you know, they eat animals because they can't uh, handle human blood yet. What? <sighs> oh, and also there's this other subplot where the wife's gonna Joss is gonna move, take the daughter to Florida, and she's gonna sell the house, but because Jamie Foxx hasn't been paying his share of tuition and for braces. There's a dental plan. Paige needs braces. Dental plan. Paige needs braces. So he's got to come up with 10 grand. Because apparently Megan Good's character doesn't want to bother working. Or I, I don't really know why he's got to be the only one providing that. I think it's a 50-50 thing when it comes to merit. But whatever. You know, maybe I'm putting too much thought into a movie called Day Shift. Written by one of the people that did Army of the Fucking Dead. So, yeah, Snoop shows up, and then he leaves. And then he shows up a little bit later. And then the bowling alley action happens. Uh, Dave Franco <laughs> pisses himself, um, which is a recurring thing. And then suddenly, the and then they suddenly show up at this one house. It's like this hive area. And there are these two other bulky, um, you know, buffed up guys that help him hunt vampires and get some more teeth so he can trade this stuff in and get this tuition and brace money because, again, Megan Good's character can't be bothered to fucking, you know, chip in a penny, apparently. <clears throat> and, but even tells, uh, you know, Seth this. He's like, I have to do this. I have to do this to save my family. So, yeah, they do, that prolonged scene where they're in that goddamn house and, oh, don't stand next to the wall. Oh, I'm standing next to the wall. Oh, Oh, Dave Franco's character is panicked and pisses himself again because it's funny. No, it's fucking not. Audrey then uh, manages to find Bud because she kills Troy at one point. And she targets the family. And instantly they're targeted. Like, one night, and not in Bangkok because they're in San Fernando. Uh, would try to come up with more lyrics, but I'm honestly pissed off by this movie. <laughs> They do a chase first, and this chase goes through, like, you know, remember Edward Furlong and Arnold Schwarzenegger on the, you know, on the motorcycle, you know, through those tunnels and stuff like that? Remember that? That's the kind of uh, tunnel stuff we got. In fact, it might have been the same fucking tunnels for all I know, except that was actually made by somebody competent. And J.J. Perry seems like he's un he understands the action, but that's all he understands. <laughs> and then... Basically, a bunch of people end up uh, dying. This chase takes forever. They can't fit through the tunnel, so Jamie Foxx shoots out the tires on his big truck, somehow manages to roll through, and get to the house, because I guess the tires are thick enough to be fine, even though they're shot out. <sighs> and Audrey has, has them. Oh, no. And then Seth was bitten. So now he is a... Jamie Foxx basically confesses that he hunts vampires. His wife doesn't believe him. 
Seth has this com comedic moment where he gets his head chopped off, but then gets his head back on because he's healing himself. Because vampires just suddenly heal themselves. <clears throat> and then... Um, I did note at one point, can Natasha berate and beat me up like that because I have issues? But she, it turns out, is a familiar to um, <coughs> Carla Souza's character. But she wants to take revenge on her. They also kept hinting at a character called El Jefe that is a really, really old vampire. Which makes me think we are going to get a day shift too and it's going to probably suck just as much as this. Because it'll probably be like, nobody sleeps in the woods tonight too. Electric, why the fuck did they make this Boogaloo? Thank God they're not making a third one. Why'd they even make a first one? Nevertheless, <laughs> they, they all band together. Snoop Dogg shows up with a goddamn Gatling gun. They have a shootout in like an abandoned mall area or whatever the stuff. There's an ancient temple underneath this building that nobody apparently has fucking seen. Uh, parkour Vampires of the Hidden Temple. That would have actually been a better title for that. It would have been more interesting. You might have actually gotten some Nickelodeon fans watching this. And then it was said, this is too childlike even for us. <clears throat> Snoop gets bit, but continues to fight and then blows himself up because Snoop. And he does the West Side for Life thing, which of course, you know, why not? I mean, it's it, I, I, get, I guess that would be kind of funny, except by this point I was totally checked out of the movie. <laughs> There's a showdown with Audrey. There was this wire that was used to cut off a guy's head earlier in the movie. And that's used to cut off Audrey's head. Oh no, she's dead. And also this other guy gets his arms ripped off by Natasha's character and Dave Franco's character. In the end, every, the devil comes for everyone. God, if only the devil came for the people involved in uh, producing and writing this movie. And directing this movie, quite frankly. Because I think the devil did make this. That's the only explanation for why it's so fucking bad. And should be put in the seventh circle of hell. So, <clears throat> it turns out that, well, Audrey's dead, so now everything's good. They aren't going to sell the house. And everybody's fine. And then Snoop Dogg pops out of the sewer and said, That's what I love about L.A. All the vampires. F, if this is not one, if this is not in the top five of worst movies of the year that I've seen this year, that's going to be saying something. This was really, really, as subjectively bad, some people may feel differently, but this was fucking dog shit. Anyway, agree, disagree with what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.